Eat It and Like It, brought to you by the Tybee Island Wedding Chapel. What do you say we start off our journey with a big fat cliche? Sound good to you? It's the first day of the rest of your life, and it's not your graduation from high school. Any guesses? Savannah's historic district is one of the most popular destination wedding cities in America. Just a few years ago, over a thousand wedding licenses were issued to people who don't live around these parts. So it's obvious a whole lot of people are looking to tie the knot under a live oak tree or take that party indoors. Some brides start looking forward to that day before they turn 13 years old, scrapbooking things they find in a magazine, saving them for that bright sunny day of their dreams when they marry that lucky guy. Years later, the engagement ring comes and they are off with special attention to every detail. That would include the food. They say in the wedding business that uh, um, you know your, your, your dress and your, your venue, your food and the entertainment are the four most important. Well, of course, you're gonna dance the night away, hopefully, but what the guests get to eat will be talked about for the rest of your married life, more than likely. So most brides will try really hard to make it perfect, and that is, anyone will tell you, incredibly hard to do. You know, when you're doing chicken for a lot of people, it's hard to keep that moist and not dry out. A common problem, of course, but that's just one of them. I think people who are getting married want to cater to a broad population of palates. Which could be great, or it can get you into trouble because... Trying to make grandma happy. No kidding, which depending on your budget could be lavender lacquered duck or caviar or maybe just some good old fried chicken. Whatever it is, you want people to remember their favorite wedding meal ever. Why not? It is a very big day. It was a filet mignon and, and I like my, my meat to bleed a little, moo a little, you know? and it was just delicious and it was so flavorful and it just like melted in your mouth. As it should be, even when it means catering to special diets. Uh, we had called ahead, the bride had let the chef know and uh, our plate, uh, instead of a little steak, had a, a grilled portobello mushroom on it with, along with some other things. The wedding couple and many times their parents wanted to be the perfect meal and the perfect day or night. Who cares about challenges? We're getting married and everything must be pulled off with the only hitch belonging to the bride and groom. So how do people in the know do that for you? Well, we're going on a matrimonial tour of the area. We're catching up with a cake maker and the caterer. That's later on, but up next, you need a venue before you can throw a party, right? We will introduce you to that beautiful smile behind the Coastal Empire's jewel on the coast. Bluebell Boutique, voted best women's store for seven years in a row, has a great new home in the 12 Oak Shopping Center. From Diane Von Furstenberg cocktail dresses to designer denim, from Tory Burch handbags to a custom monogram necklace, you'll find something chic for every occasion at Bluebell. Also check out the designs of Project Runway's April Johnston and have her create a one-of-a-kind piece just for you. Make sure to visit Bluebell Bridal just next door in the 12 Oak Shopping Center. Love good food, but too busy to cook or to go out? The Pantry Elf might be your answer. Certified chef Nora Van Duke has been working in people's homes for years. Whether for a special occasion or a week's meals, all recipes are designed to perfectly match your tastes and are prepared right in your kitchen with no shopping and no cleanup. Home-cooked, healthy meals are prepared for you not by magic, but by the Pantry Elf. Visit PantryElf.com for more information on how Chef Nora can help put excitement into family dining, small parties, or any other occasion. Eat it and like it. Brought to you by the Tybee Island Wedding Chapel.
Welcome back. We're getting married, y'all. Well, we are eating and liking at a wedding, which we've already established can be a bit of a challenge, which could be made a little bit easier, let's just say, if you make the surf your turf with a wedding at the beach, which on Tybee Island, Savannah's Beach just became a smidge more grandiose. Now, I would love to have an Elvis wedding now, don't get me wrong. I'm waiting for my first Elvis wedding. That's Stacy Gerald, <laughs> a fixture on Tybee Island, a woman so passionate about the place she calls home that she, in many ways, took it upon herself to give the island a boost while the economy tanked. What did she come up with? Well, this, the Tybee Island Wedding Chapel, 5,000 square feet of peaceful sanctuary for a ceremony or a party for a reception. One stop shopping, a stone's throw from the Atlantic Ocean. For years, we've had the problem of never having a venue on Tybee for weddings. So the typical bride would think that she could have a wedding in the home, which we can't do. The chapel, which sits on the north end of the island, was meticulously designed. Every corner of this building is designed for photography. Which is ironic considering the original structure was built for photography, just a different kind. This chapel was built for the filming of a movie called The Last Song, shot on Tybee Island during the summer of 2009. In the movie, the chapel burned. In real life, it was left behind by Disney. Shortly thereafter, the wheels started spinning. The city council that was sitting at that time, as well as the one that changed within two months, thought this was an amazing idea. They knew that we needed to do something to help Tybee get out of this recession. Roughly a year and a good bit of planning and a few thousand pounds of sweat equity later, and we had this, a masterpiece on an island that most of the state of Georgia knew was sorely needed. We've heard that from the Atlanta Magazine. We've heard it from The Knot. They're staying busy too, expanding their space, perfecting the bridal experience with beautiful sitting rooms, perfect landscaping, and of course, the kitchen. We've talked to lots and lots of chefs. We talked to Roberto Liocci, we talked to Murray Gottlieb, we talked to Alex Friedman, and they would make a trip down here and tell us what we were doing right, and what we were doing wrong. By all accounts, they've done everything right, put everything in this kitchen on wheels to adjust to the chef, and plenty of room outside to accommodate open flames. Grilling, frying, right. um, low country boils. Right. We just are blessed in our area to have such an assortment of fabulous chefs. Who have all given this chapel their blessing. Coming up on Eat It and Like It, I don't know about you, but I am hungry. Time to take a bite out of this episode after the break. And a little bit later, chances are you're not planning to cater for a wedding anytime soon, but you can pick up an idea or two on a perfect bite-sized treat for the next party of 20 to 50 people. All of it coming up on Eat It and Like It. Savannah Tire introduces our maximum low price guarantee. Savannah Tire has built a reputation of providing the highest quality products with superior service. Now we're raising the bar even higher by introducing Savannah Tire's maximum low price guarantee. If you find a lower price on a comparable tire from any of our competitors in the Coastal Empire, we'll beat it or give you a free oil change. So shop your locally owned Savannah Tire and save. Quality. Service. Savings. Savannah Tire. Take your car to the max. Love good food, but too busy to cook or to go out? The Pantry Elf might be your answer. Certified chef Nora Van Duke has been working in people's homes for years. Whether for a special occasion or a week's meals, all recipes are designed to perfectly match your tastes and are prepared right in your kitchen with no shopping and no cleanup. Home-cooked healthy meals are prepared for you not by magic, but by the Pantry Elf. Visit PantryElf.com for more information on how Chef Nora can help put excitement into family dining, small parties, or any other occasion. Eat it and like it. Brought to you by the Tybee Island Wedding Chapel. Welcome back. We're 
getting married today. Well, not really, but we're going through what your average bride is doing, preparing for her very much above average day. You found your spot, now you have to find your food. They'll come in and say, I want this and I want that. And, and I'll say, you know, honey, I know that that's what you want. And by the way, it's your day and you get what you want. As most any bride will. Paul Kennedy is Paul Kennedy Catering. With a little help from his friends, of course, they pull it off every single time for you and your friends with that perfect wedding meal. You are honoring the folks that are coming. So you want to do some kind of a menu that honors thank you for traveling from Wyoming or Ohio or, you know, Texas. Which does require special planning, but Paul is quick to tell you he is here for you. It is your day. You get what you want and it comes out of this facility in Garden City. Multiple events a day, anywhere between 20 and 40 per week, they get it done. What is his secret? Well, you knew there had to be one, right? Well, behind every great man is a great woman, don't you think? Paul is no different, and he is not ashamed to tell you so. She's as good a banquet chef as I have ever worked with. I mean, she is amazing. She is Elaine Bronson, executive chef at Paul Kennedy Catering. She drives the bus, and everyone in the building knows it. In large part, obviously, because that kitchen can be extremely busy. Not uncommon for it to crank out 2,500 meals for military flights overseas. Or even more complicated still, five different events, five different venues, five different multi-course menus, all within hours of each other. Do you think that takes organization and skill? Well, you would be right. But that's behind the scene. Out front, they also go out of their way to make your day and your meal memorable. If they want high-end, uh, high-end Southern, I mean, we've taken you know, the traditional southern menus and, and up them a little bit. Pork tenderloin uh, uh, on a skewer that's been barbecued. Um, we'll do fish tacos and, and uh, watermelon uh, gazpacho shooters, you know, to bring in the watermelon, to bring in the, anything that's southern. Which Paul tells me is a lot of what people ask for when they come to Savannah to get married. They want what the locals eat, so Paul and his staff do everything to make it work. If that means multiple trips to a venue to make sure nothing is overcooked, then that's what they are doing, arriving hours before the guests do to make sure everything is in order. It, it is difficult and that's where catering is, is challenging. And they're up to it, long before you get to dessert. Can't have a wedding without a cake, can you? Well, I suppose you can, but you don't really want to. So many talented cake makers in Savannah, we can do an entire 30 minutes on just them. But here we are, in the heart of Savannah's historic district at Tier Luxury Cakes, downtown's newest cake factory that is turning heads already because there is no shortage on business. Very few places in the country are as lucky as we are to have the wedding market that we have. People come from all over the world to get married here in Savannah, and we are so fortunate for that. Ashley Perkins is this spot's cake boss. She's a former student at the Savannah College of Art and Design, and she was already a talented artist. The cake part came later. You really see two people from, or people from two different backgrounds. You see people who have an art background like me, and you see people who have a pastry background. They typically meet at the bakery and turn out works of art like this. So beautiful, you barely want to touch them, much less cut them and eat them. But it all begins with the bride's vision, something that in many cases, she's been thinking about for a very long time. Very rarely do we sit down and say exactly this cake right here is the cake that I want. Sometimes it's a photo from a magazine. The bride knows what she wants but can't describe it. Or she saw something somewhere before and doesn't remember the detail. Ashley sees it all and actually has a perfect solution. We do a lot of sketches before the wedding day so they can see exactly what they're getting. We're one of only a couple of uh, bakeries in the area that do it. Which obviously helps, especially when you're getting some off the wall type of requests like Chewbacca or even worse. It was a birthday cake, it wasn't a wedding cake. Uh, and this guy wanted to surprise his girlfriend with a, a, a birthday cake. She had this really unique tattoo on her inner arm. Uh, and he wanted, I guess he had some sort of inside joke with her or that he was going to one day get her a cake of her arm, but he wanted it to look like it was actually a severed arm. So it had like a bone sticking out and like fake blood kind of pooling around the arm. It was really kind of bizarre. Hey, don't argue at all. The customer is always right after all, especially when that front door bell rings and it's one of her many walk-up guests looking for one of her perfectly delicious cupcakes. She 
She sells them daily and she has a favorite. I love the key lime pie. That is absolutely my favorite. If that's Ashley's favorite, then I've got to try one for myself. These are uh, uh, key limes? Uh, yeah, it's a little key lime slice on top there. It's got a key lime buttercream, a key lime pastry cream in the middle of it, and a little bit of a uh, graham cracker crust on the bottom to simulate that key lime pie. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, man, man, man. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Next on Either Like It, we're going back to Tybee Island's wedding chapel for a quick lesson on how to make a perfectly, wonderfully tasty bruschetta. Pesto, maybe? Of course. Eat it and like it. We'll be right back. Eat It and Like It, brought to you by the Tybee Island Wedding Chapel. All right, everyone, welcome back. It is time to eat, and we're going to show you, obviously, no one is going to cater for a wedding of 180 people, but we are going to show you a very simple recipe that you can make for your next cocktail party to serve maybe 25 or 30 people. I'm not going to do it. This young lady is going to do it. Her name is Cynthia Crichton Jones. How are you? Well, thanks, Jesse. Thanks for joining us. You are with Cape Creations Catering, correct? That is correct. You've been in Savannah for how long? I've been here since 99. Um, came in and worked as a chef, and then in 2005, I started uh, my own catering company. Very good. Now, the first question is going to be, oh, I love her accent. Where is it from? Uh, I'm from South Africa. Very good. Now, the dish you're showing us today is not of South African origin. It's just of really good origin. It's not smell vision but it smells really good in here. <laughs> what are you going to make for us today? Um, I thought to make a little bruschetta, because this um, bruschetta has everything that you're going to find in your pantry, so you don't have to go on a big shopping expedition. Gotcha. Um, it is a little bit... Um, towards the Italian flavors, okay. if I may say so, because bruschetta is Italian. Right. But we're having some sauteed kale, which for me brings it right down to the south. I what mean, it's just brand right That's, um, yeah, this is our kale. I blanched it ahead of time, which you need to do. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to saute that with a couple of ingredients. Um, you can do your kale ahead of, ahead of uh, time. You can do it the day before. Right. You can make your bruschetta ahead uh, the day before. Does it um, taste better when you make it the day before, the little mixture? Um, the mixture itself I would make uh, just before service, gotcha. but uh, to do the bread, you can do it a day before, sure. um, but you can definitely blanch your kale the day before. Um, right. So let's get going then. Yeah, I'm going to just slice a couple of uh, pieces of baguette here. Okay, can I cheat? Oh, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a bread freak. Snob, just, actually. Just don't touch the cheese. Mm -mm. <laughs> what kind uh, of cheese is it? Uh, we have a gorgonzola, mm -hmm. which is a lovely stinky cheese, mm -hmm. um, one of my personal favorites. Um, the bread you're just going to cut out on a, uh, on a bit of an angle right. so that, that you get a nice um, piece of right. um, beautiful eyes, bread. You have to have a nice presentation. Indeed. Right. So I'm using an induction burner here. We're going to bring that up to temp. Mm -hmm. um, induction burners are fantastic. Um, take the, the pan off, mm -hmm. no more heat. You right. stop cooking straight away. Um, it does remain hot as this is a tad hot. Right. We'll get that, give that a little chance to get hot mm -hmm. so we can get a bit of a sear. Tell us what else you have here, the ingredients. Oh, absolutely. We have um, some pignolas, which are the pine nuts, mm -hmm. toasted. Just do that in the oven, it's the easiest way. Right. A few rehydrated raisins. Can't get them back to grapes, but we don't want them too, too hard. Right. We'll oh. drink the grapes later. <laughs> we'll drink right. the grapes later. Yeah, we'll drink the yeah, grapes yeah, with yeah, the hors d'oeuvre. Exactly. And then we have um, balsamic vinegar, which is wonderful. When you cook balsamic vinegar, it becomes a little sweet. Right. We have a little bit of um, garlic, which I'm going to just slice ever, ever so thin. All right. That takes talent to slice garlic that quickly, that thin. Well, you know, I've been doing this for 20 something years. I can't say how many 20 somethings, but right. 20, 20 something years. And let me see, you have all your fingers, right? I have okay, all my fingers, all right. a little scarred there back you there. Go. there. Um, <laughs>